I was wondering what would happen if we assembled an entire gaming PC with 100% Chinese parts, and if it would be possible to get satisfactory performance without spending so much. And that's exactly what we're going to see in today's video. If you like it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe here. This includes the video card, motherboard, processor, and RAM. There's even thermal paste in here. There's a power supply and an SSD and a computer case. I'm hoping to play some heavy games with these configurations that I'm about to show you. So I'm going to start going item by item here and then we'll do the assembly and testing. The video card chosen was an R9 3700. Let's get this out of the way. This PC is not a 100% recommendation for you. It's a practice we're doing here to see if it's going to work or not. So this card has 2 to 4 gigabytes of memory and offers adequate performance for full HD games at medium settings. Its clock goes up to 975 megahertz. The power supply has 1200 watts of power, so we hope it's for real. Of course, it could be a slightly less powerful power supply, but we'll go with this one. I've already tested it with an RTX video card and it worked, so let's move on. Our SSD disk is this one and it has 480 gigabytes of space, and it has about 500 megabytes of read per second, so it's all good. I decided to get some thermal paste as well, and there are different brands. This one is supposed to have a thermal conductivity of 12 watts. That's supposed to be pretty top, actually. And now onto the motherboard, memory and processor kit. And here we have the magnificent, wonderful X99 kit. This kit offers good value for money for those looking to build a system with server, workstation, or gamer performance at a more affordable price. The processor is an Intel Xeon E5, and memory totals 16 GB DDR4. It has 6 cores and 12 threads, and it's pretty cool for the total price of this kit. There's the case. The case is usually private, so the price varies a lot. The key here is to have enough space to fit the parts. So the cabinet falls outside our standard, but we need cooling for the cabinet and also for the processor. So here we have the CPU cooler, but it could be any cooler as long as it fits the motherboard. And now I'm going to speed up the video for the tests. We'll first check the SSD, then we'll test the games. I'm going to open Crystal Disk Info here and Crystal Disk Mark. These are two programs for speed testing and see how it's doing. And look at the SSD there. 512 gigabytes is showing up here instead of 480. Have I been lucky? It's telling me it's been turned on three times. Number of hours connected, three hours. But I just turned it on for a few minutes. It could be a few hours of testing by the manufacturer or something. And it runs at 600 gigabytes per second. It's 100% healthy with a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. Here at Crystal Disk Mark, I'm going to take LA Drive F here and do this first sequential test here. So we can see what speeds it can hit. And we managed to reach 525 megabytes per second in sequential reading and 439 megabytes per second in sequential writing which are standard SSD drives of this standard here. Let's take a look at the information on GPU-Z. Let's open it too so we can see the processor information. Well, the information matches perfectly, so everything is fine. And now let's look at the games, and the first one is Counter-Strike Global Offensive. A light game. The graphics card has 62% utilization at 61 degrees, 1% load, and the CPU averages 13 frames per second, which could be a little better, especially since this game isn't very heavy. I think it might be because the Xeon has a weaker single thread. Its clock is lower, so we lose out a little on that faster response, or in improving that 1% or so. 
The average is good, 116 frames. That's good. The video card isn't limiting us. It even got to 90% here. Its clock isn't that high. It's a slightly older GPU. But it's running at a good temperature. VRAM usage is at 1.5 gigs, and it has 2 gigs. So there's no video memory limit. And the processor is running at 24%. That's pretty low. But the problem is that its clock is lower. With all the cores being used, it doesn't reach 3 GHz of operating frequency. So that's a problem for getting more FPS here in the game we're testing now. RAM consumption, which is 16 gigs. We're using less than 6 gigs. And the graphic quality I have here at the moment is in full HD resolution. Full screen and high graphics quality. Everything is high, RAM price is low, a balance between the two, and the score is great for the low price. It's like 1 to 1 50-50 completion rate. But we know that to play CS people dial it down and don't care. And the guy wants FPS going up on the screen. So I'm going to lower the graphics quality here, and let's see if this can be reflected in more frames. I believe that very little that defines CS is the CPU. And look, our average even went down in full HD on low. It ends up making it so easy for the GPU that it partly overloads it. It seems to overload the Xeon and make it more unstable. Well good, let's move on to another game. We're playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey now guys. We're running the game in full HD resolution. Assassin's Creed Odyssey isn't such a recent game, but it's a triple-A game, let's put it that way. It's graphically heavy, and we're averaging 46 frames and 1% load, and that's bad. It no longer looks professional and readable. We're getting 37 frames here in full HD, low graphics quality. GPU usage is showing me 64%. AR, now it's up to 99%. That's good. That's really okay. The GPU is at 66 degrees Celsius. It's not hot. It's fine. Because I've changed it too. I put a good thermal paste on it so it wouldn't be a problem now really. I've already done some preventive cleaning maintenance on it. The Xeon... This percentage of use of the Xeon I'm a little afraid of. I wouldn't think it would be used that little. But it could be because it has more cores, right? It shows us 30% utilization. This motherboard, personally, can't cope with, uh, it has some problems showing temperature and processor consumption statistics. That's why I'm a bit worried too, right? Confirming this information. But you can use it without a problem. Let's move on to the next game, Doom Eternal. The video memory here, the two dedicated gigabytes, the GDDR5 here are screaming. We're at high resolution with vertical synchronization on, and low graphics quality, as low as possible within this high resolution of 1600. So it's already lower than full HD. In order to get a more interesting number of frames to enjoy the game. And I have to say that this way it's reaching 60 FPS here and going up as the game goes on, so it's fine. Let's move on to the next game, which is Cyberpunk in full HD, and at 17 FPS. Well, that was to be expected, but by changing a few settings, we can reach 24 FPS or something similar, but the video card's memory isn't enough for full HD. Going to HD, lowering the settings, you should get close to 30 FPS or something close to it, in fact. So the final price of this computer was this, and of course the 1200 watt power supply weighed it down a bit. But a 500 watt power supply would do the trick and save around 60 or 70 dollars here. The price of a monitor plus keyboard and mouse is around 118 dollars if you want to put it on the bill. It's a pretty good computer, let's face it, for that price. So that's it folks, thanks for watching, and see you next time.